Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Springfield at the Crown Plaza Hotel with the National Coca-Cola Collectors Club. More than 800 people in Springfield to fulfill their wishes and complete their collection of Coca-Cola items. As you can see behind me, there's a long line of people now checking in items for the auction, which takes place in the middle of this convention. So we asked a couple of the past presidents here who know Coca-Cola items like nobody else to take us inside before the auction and tell us what some of these items are worth. Dick McChesney, you founded this Coke Collectors Club, did you not? I would rather say that I was one of a handful of people who decided that this would be a fun hobby. Yeah, 40 years ago. Exactly. And, and you've had a, one of these, collect, these club conventions every year for 40 years, and you haven't missed one of them. That's true. That's amazing, isn't it? That's true. Yeah. You don't set out to, to create a record like that, but it just happens. A part of it is the passion you have for your hobby. Yeah. Now, this is a busy time because where we're standing, we're, we're in the main ballroom of the, of the Crown Plaza, and this is the check-in for the auction, and the auction is one of the huge events for this whole uh, convention. I would, I would think the, the, the biggest event of the week, yes. Yeah. What's going on behind you right now? Well, people are allowed to put in four items into the auction, and then that will be our auction items, and the club will take 10% of whatever value it achieves. And, and the nice part about that is that uh, people can share the, their collectibles with each other, you know, mm -hmm. and the club can uh, get a profit from it to maintain its ability to, to exist, mm -hmm. frankly. Okay, so there's people outside, they're waiting in a long exactly. line outside yes. in the hall. They're coming into the exhibit hall here, they're checking things in, and then what, what's going on with the computers over here? Well, they'll, they'll, for years before we put everything on a computer so that the people in the back can, can see it uh, on a screen as well as check the number. Uh, it just oh. accommodates the, the auction somewhat. Okay, okay. So and also we need that in order to keep track of the buyers and the sellers because some people will buy 20 items and when they check out, we have to do it as quickly and efficiently yeah. as we can. How long will the auction take and like how many items might there be in an auction? I would think with our, we have a membership of 800 and some people in the hotel. I would think uh, there will be an auction estimate of about 600 items. After that, it gets a little tricky because an item a minute, uh, we're, we're already at 10 hours. So Wow. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, so it's an all-day thing. The auction's an all, all day. day. It'll start at 9 and end when the last well, item well, is auctioned. Okay, I see about 400 chairs here. Will people stay all day for that? Indeed, they will, yes. Oh, man, that's remarkable. Yeah, from the very first item yeah. uh, to the very last. Yeah, and you also have other events here, like downstairs, there's a barter thing going on where, where they exchange memorabilia, not for money, but for item for item. That's right? exactly right. We have several chapters of the Coca-Cola Collectors Club around the country mm -hmm. and the chapter leaders get together and rather than buy things from each other, they trade things from each other, gifts that they've accumulated mm -hmm. in their own city over the year and when they go back to their city they've got some new things to give us good door prizes and mm -hmm. so forth. Now you're really generous to spend time with us because at noon today, and that's just a couple hours away, you have a seminar and the seminar you're going to conduct for people is called What's It Worth? Exactly. Is that right? So they might bring you something or you might have a computer, or a, 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 say some pictures on a screen to show people and you tell them how you judge what things are worth, right? Well, uh, this works a little differently. Uh, one of our people pick out five items from the auction and we put them on a table and let people come into the room and guess what they think it will go in the auction tomorrow and then prizes are awarded uh, to the winners. Okay. And then we have a panel of five supposedly experts who will uh, give their judgment of what it will go the next day. And that's sort of, that can be kind okay. of humorous, it can be kind of funny. Yeah. We all, all five of us will have a subtly different uh, mm -hmm. approach to it, almost all, all of the five yeah. items. It's a lot of fun. It's a fun uh, hour and yeah. everybody looks forward to it. Let's Let's you, let's you and I take a walk uh, okay. down here. Down the, let's pick a table. We'll pick this table, and I want you to stop when you see something that looks really cool or desirable or rare. Okay, okay. and we'll show it and we'll find out what it's worth. Okay. Uh, right now we're passing some things. We're, we'll put out as promotions. Some of these are recent. We're going to get something. Here's a here's an ad. Uh, 
an ad that's a little different. It goes back to the 30s. Can, can I touch sure. it? Sure. Okay, I'm just going to hold it up so we can get a shot at it. It's a it's a 30s piece, and uh, someone who collects 30s, if that's their category, uh -huh. to, to collect 30s pieces, that will be a, a, a prize for them, and half the half the people will will pass on it. Can, can, can you give me any idea what you think that might be worth? I would. I, I think it's probably a $200 piece. Oh, okay. All right. I like that. <laughs> We, we uh, here's a here's a uh, what we call the Tarzan tray, a Coca-Cola tray that was made in 1934 with Johnny Weissmuller and Marino wow. Sullivan. And the Tarzan people love this tray. The movie people love the tray, and the Coca-Cola people think it's oh, it's yeah. probably one of the <laughs> premier trays in the tray collection. And this tray will probably sell. Condition is everything. This condition is. It's certainly an excellent, in my guess, it'll go for about $1,300. Oh my goodness, that's terrific. That's... Coca-Cola came out wow. with a, a tray each year <laughs> up, up until about 1950. Was it always movie stars or was it no, could have been about anything? No, movie stars were rare. Uh, there was a movie star in 1936. It was called the Hostess Tray and she went on uh, to do several movies. Uh, she was the ingenue and little woman and so mm -hmm. forth. Oh, didn't, yeah. didn't know she was on a coke tray. She got paid $10 to, to sit. To have her picture taken, they didn't know what it was for. Never told her. It was later in her life she wow. found out she was on a 1930s, which is an anniversary year, so it makes it, uh, 50th anniversary makes it sort of unique. And a movie star as well. She was alive um, up until a few years ago in a guest of honor of one of our uh, conventions and I had the privilege of sitting next to her and chatting right? and seeing her portfolio of her movie career. It was a real treat. But, were there many of these taps around? Yes, the, uh, these were all made uh, to, to be used in drugstores and mm -hmm. and so they're very collectible. People like to put up a simulated soda fountain in their basement and these can be rigged to work perfectly just as if, if it was in the drugstore. Mm -hmm. This is in pristine shape. It, and is I, in, it looks like it's never been used. It, it, it has a slogan, things go better with Coke, which yeah. makes it around a 1960 vintage. Uh -huh. And my guess it might be worth a couple thousand dollars. Wow. Okay, we're going to go over there to that okay. row and take a look at some of those items. Let's stop first at this bus. This, of course, looks like it's out of London. Exactly. They drink Coke in, in all over the world. Indeed they do. Yeah. And it looks early. The logo is an early uh, logo. I'm not a truck collector. I'm, I might not be able to give you a good estimate, but I have a feeling that this will be a very popular and hot item in the auction because mm -hmm. we have Coca-Cola must have made a 500 different trucks, maybe a thousand different trucks over the years, and the truck collectors want every one of them. Yeah, and this well, is a really and unique. And toys one. are so hot now too. Indeed. So this doubles as a uh, as a value. Right, it's a great category yeah. uh, collecting trucks. Yeah. Toy what about trucks. old bottles? Well, old bottles is a collectible uh, category all by itself. The bottles you're looking at are what we call straight-sided bottles, before made before 1915 when the standard bottle was created. Mm -hmm. These two are straight side clear bottles. Uh, they have a value based on maybe the bottler that was on it and, the, and whether it's on a nice script. Uh, those two bottles are significant bottle collectors. For bottle collectors are significant and mm -hmm. my guess is they might range from 50 bucks to uh, maybe $200. Really, each bottle? Each bottle, yes. Wow. Uh, well, they know the rare ones, and mm -hmm. the, the, the lesser on the market of individual bottle, the rarer it becomes. You know, Coke has had a long relationship with Santa Claus. Indeed, he has. I mean, because, and I'm going to be very careful with any of these items because I know they're precious, but I have not seen any, th this particular rendition of Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. the, these were, these dolls were made in the 50s. Uh, it, it, a company in Atlanta made them, and. Coke came out with a different one uh, every couple years for about six or seven years. Uh -huh. And this one is an early one with the black shoes. It, <laughs> it probably has a value of a couple hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And posters after poster after poster. Yeah, guess... you know, people want to cover every square inch of their walls yeah. and the big posters are always popular. Uh, it, someone once told me that, if, do we have a sign that's about this big and this and I said, why do you want a sign like that? And he said, that's all the room I've got left on my walls. Oh, my goodness. You know, I have seen collectors like that. And some of them, and I, I, I interviewed a guy just last week that had a barn 
-hmm. wall to wall collectible yes, stuff. Not all mm -hmm. Coke, but and all every space. Well, uh, signage uh, is popular in every category. Beverages are certainly major, but all uh, automobile yeah. uh, and they and they you will see collectors collect both and and mm -hmm. hang them proudly. Yeah, and let's just go one more time. This huge Coke bottle here. Let's just take a look at this and. This is a good, See a good what it's worth. I'm going to turn this around so you can read the, this one's, there's the December 25th, 1923 date. This was a display bottle that was put into grocery stores and drugstore windows. They filled it with a liquid with simulated Coca-Cola mm -hmm. and put a cap on it and use it as a display bottle. I have one in my house uh, that still has the original liquid in it and it still has the original cap. Oh. This was, they, they made these display bottles for obvious reasons. They, they wanted uh, people to uh, identify the, the drink with a bottle. It was made as, originally as a fountain drink. And mm -hmm. the, the man who owned the company back in 1894, uh, he was asked to give the rights to bottle it, and he said, you know, nobody will drink it in a bottle. It's a fountain drink. So. Well, you've got one with the liquid still in it, but this one, in this condition, what do you think this is worth? Uh, I would say without the cap, about $300. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Well, listen, Dick, we are going to, you have arranged for us to catch up with some of your um, colleagues who are also yes. doing the seminar with you today. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask one of them to take me through some of these other items. But thank you so much for your you help. You're very welcome. And I hope you have a great week in Springfield. It's been great so far. I'm yeah. sure it'll continue. Well, thank you. Thank you. John Buckholtz, you, you're a past president of I this am. Coke Collectors Group as well. I've served in 83, 84. You've been well, two no, years, No, huh? one year, 83 through 84. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. And you're also on this panel, this What's It Worth panel, That's right. right? I enjoy so that. You're, yeah. one of the, you're one of the go-to guys for if you're looking at collectibles and you want to get an idea of what it might be worth, you, you, can, you can pretty much well, narrow it down. Well, I've been doing it for almost 40 years, so that, a little bit of that comes with experience of seeing the prices. And everything, so, yeah. Have you been to most of these conventions? I've been to all but five, and so that means we've been to 35 out of yeah, the 40. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you're from Atlanta, right? From Atlanta, Does that Georgia. have anything to do with you wanting to be a Coke collector? Actually, it didn't. My, uh, my son, who was 12 years old at the time, back in around 1974, he decided that he, it was in the Andy Warhol kind of period, and he decided that he wanted some nice, colorful stuff to put on the wall. So we, we had done antiquing before, and we did the flea market stuff and everything, and we knew that the Coca-Cola stuff would be the most colorful stuff that he could find. Uh -huh. And so at that time, we went out to the flea markets with him, and he was buying it. We would probably give him some things for Christmas or for a birthday, but most of the stuff he bought. And then we found out about the fact that there was a club and we couldn't believe that there was a club for people who collected Coca-Cola. Yeah. And so we decided that at 12, as long as we went with them, we'd see what this would look like. And you found out that there are other crazies too, right? Oh, lots of crazies, <laughs> yeah, right. And especially in those years, it was building so fast. And, yeah. and as people were finding out about the club, it was going so fast. Well, you've so, got almost 800 people here in Springfield. That's right, yep. Uh, it's, I think it's remarkable. How, how did you choose Springfield? Well, I think they, they were trying to find something in kind of the Midwest mm -hmm. because our, the, most of our people are, are east of the Mississippi. And so you want to try to get as close to the Mississippi as you can mm -hmm. and uh, so that you're also not too far away from the, from the Western people. Yeah. But we've, and most of them are, are centralized. We, we go back to Atlanta about every six or seven years, something mm -hmm. like that. Next year we'll be in Arizona, though. So we're, we're trying to help the, yeah. trying to do the right thing by the people in yeah, the West. So not everybody has to travel too far all the time. That's right, and yeah. that's what they're trying to do. So about every three or four years uh, in the West. And so it'll be a little smaller. We hope not, but we'll probably yeah. we'll be a little smaller in Arizona. But we still got a tremendous amount of new collectors that'll come now because it's in the West. So, yeah, hey, so let's you and I take a walk okay. and take a look at some of this priceless, oh, it's not priceless, okay. that's why you're here to tell sure. me what the price is. Okay. But what about this stack of cans here? All right, well, that's a tricky one because, uh, you know, the, the, um, the number of can collectors has probably, uh, has probably been reduced over the last few years, mm -hmm. uh, but because there's so many of them, and one, once again, when you have a collection that just keeps growing and growing, you can never find an end mm -hmm. to it. But a lot of the international people still collect it. We still have ours. Something like this, I would expect to go for less than $100. Uh -huh. It's just okay. hard to say. But it's, um, it's, it's 
they, they have different series. Coke is very smart about the way they market things, and, mm -hmm. and it looks like that's a series of baseball players from Detroit, and but also they have some other specialized mm -hmm. cans mm -hmm. in there from different events and stuff. Okay, so, so that's yeah. not that's that's collectible, but it's not it's a not, high yeah, price. And it's item. very collectible. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, you see a lot of these, uh, m most of it's advertising stuff. This would have been in a store, I assume, right? That's right, and then that's what they really made it for. They didn't make it to, for people to collect. They didn't make it for people to, to, to buy. Uh, that would have been in a store, mm -hmm. or in a, in a drugstore, in a grocery store, or, and they weren't really for home use. So yeah. Certainly our collectors use them for home D use. Does it matter if it works or not? Well, it certainly does from a price standpoint. Yeah. I mean, now we have plenty of people that can fix them because uh, that one may have, may or may not have been ever electrified. Yeah, that is mm -hmm. electrified. But if, if, for instance, that motor doesn't work, then we got plenty of people that can slap a battery-operated motor sure. in it. So, from all intents yeah. and purposes, it's, it, it will it's not work. the same yeah. clock, but it's yeah. it works, and that's what people. What do you think for. the price on that is? Uh, that's probably about one hundred and sixty dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and and it's a it's a very nice clock, and you don't see them in that kind of condition most because most of those clocks are, yeah. that came from the fifties are kind of beat up, you know. Now this we is got a, our service ladies this here. This is a wonderful item, yeah. Uh, you don't see this in any auction very often, and I'm really glad to see it here. Um, Have you ever seen anything like it? Well, I, I've seen it like it, but I don't think I've ever, I was telling a guy, it was in it was in his room, so I was visiting him, because that's one of the other things we do at this convention, is people come and they, they sell this out of their room, so mm -hmm. we call it room hopping. And, and we just hop from room to room, yeah, and, yeah. and if you have your door open, if you're not expect a coke company, huh? you better expect company. Yeah. <laughs> so so people leave their door open, and uh -huh. people come in, and he had it in his room, and uh, and this is certainly from the '40s, and people yeah. would put this out as a patriotic gesture in their drug stores, or not in the grocery store. This would be a drug store, right? uh -huh. and and they would be made available through the bottler, you know, just like any of the yeah. other things. The bottler would pay for it, but they would never let the drugstore people mm -hmm. pay for it. There's also a set of them that are life size. Wow. And and they go for probably twelve to fourteen hundred dollars a piece. I would expect this set here, if it sells, mm -hmm. to go for over three thousand dollars. Oh my and, goodness. Uh, it's, it's an amazing Oh that's terrific. And in that condition, I mean it's it's just an amazing thing yeah. to see. But yeah. that's all the branches of the service that were at that particular time. Mm -hmm. For the women, you know. Yeah. Now yeah. we saw we saw a platter uh, earlier with a uh, Weissmuller and uh, oh, O'Sullivan sure. on it. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know who this is, but these they made a lot of these, didn't they? They made them, and, but what they would do with them is, again, they're brilliant marketing people. They would give them to churches for their use in their in their socials. Mm -hmm. So they would serve their meals on the trays. I mean, I, I went to a Boy Scout camp in Atlanta that had the plastic tray that they did in 1960. And they gave that to the Boy Scout because they would serve meals on that plastic tray. Well, you're getting a plastic tray, and underneath it says Coca-Cola, yeah. and you're always getting Coca-Cola on your mind. So, yeah. they, I mean, they, they really... But and you, and a, it can beautiful. double. You can pass the platter at church, you know. Yeah, that's you're... exactly right. But the other thing, too, about it is if you'll notice those, the wholesome, pretty girls, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, nothing risque. I mean, they just did a wonderful yeah. job with the, the costumes and the, the period. And, and again, you can learn a lot about the history of the country or the world by looking at the stuff that Coca-Cola right. puts out because they really try to keep up with the times. Yeah. What's it worth? Um, probably something like this. Um, that's one of the, the areas of the collectibles that has come down over the over the, the years. Uh, it's surprising, though, but that's in such prime condition. I would say over $150, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it used to be a $300 tray. But uh, but again, that's just part of the deal. You know, okay. So. Now, yeah. I never saw a case like this. 12, yeah. 12 picnic coolers. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, a Coke. I, it's. I, I'm. Relu I'm reluctant to touch it because it looks like it might be fragile. Well, it, it is a little fragile. But again, this was this was part of their gimmick, and this would be in grocery stores. Mm -hmm. And again, to encourage you to buy a 12 pack, you know, mm -hmm. a, a, to, to buy two six packs. Right. And, and people and hadn't really. Uh, that ha that hadn't been tried before. No. Uh. Uh. No. It, it, and it's it's a it's a wonderful item. Something yeah. like this. Uh, because you have people who collect cartons, yeah. and so that would be considered to be a carton or a cooler. I mean, it's it's really got both. So we have people who collect coolers, people yeah. who collect cartons. So I would expect this to go for nearly $100. <laughs> a little cardboard yeah, box. <laughs> and of course, some, now, the, the famous, the most, probably the most famous character of Coca-Cola is I pick the Sprite Boy. Sure, so we can see Absolutely. him? Absolutely, yeah. And that careful. is, uh, yeah. And this, this now, is, is this called Sprite Boy? He's called Sprite Boy. Yeah. Okay, was he a and new he invention in by a new uh, a well, new marketing he was invention? Really, 
well, yeah, he, he came into at the beginning of the 40s, and he was really supposed to, it was be about spirit, and, and they were trying to lift the spirits of the American people in, oh, and sure. with the war and everything mm -hmm. going on. So he was called Sprite Boy, mm -hmm. and he just, he really, when you look at him, you can't help but feel a little bit better, just yeah, looking at yeah. the figure. And so they used this uh, through the beginning of the 40s and dropped out, sometimes it went into the into the uh, 50s, uh -huh. but it, they kept them up after the war, but not, mm -hmm. not too far after Okay, the war. and so Sprite Boy lasted maybe t maybe maybe, maybe 10, 10 years. years. Okay. But now you'll see what's on the back of my shirt. Oh no, that's not on you don't shirt. Have, you got the wrong shirt on. <laughs> yeah, I got the wrong shirt on. But, but, you know, but that's the popular graphic to put on anything, and you know yeah. if you do that, it's gonna be a big hit, you know. I mean, okay. Whatever it is. What, what, what's it worth? Uh, something in that shape. A little bit of damage here, um, probably, 400, 450. 400, yeah. wow. Mm -hmm. It's just very hard. The, the big discussion is, is what kind of, what color rope came with it. And there's, <laughs> there's people who say it didn't come with rope uh -huh. and you were able to put your own color in there. Some people say it came with a tan type rope. So that, yeah. that will probably come up again during this because people who are perfectionists and think they know, they will want that to be some other color than red, maybe. You know, mm -hmm. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But it'll be an interesting discussion yeah. while the auctioneer is up there, if anybody asked the question. Yeah. Not, so. Yeah. Well, the way this check-in is going, it looks like maybe they're they may be halfway through now of getting people in here. Well, I guess it's pretty quick. I mean, it, it, you oh, can yeah. do it well, in four we, hours. Well, we you? know that we cannot uh, keep these people in line all the time. Yeah. One of the things that used to happen is before we did it with a number system, like like I'm, I'm 507, so I would not be able to put my items in starting until uh, until 10 o'clock or until 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But before we came with, with that system, people would line up here for like three hours before they even opened the doors yeah. because that was the only way that they had to get it themselves yeah. No, this is the way to do it. This, this is, is the way, the way to, do to do it. it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. you can check everybody in in a, in a, in a few hours, I yeah, guess. Yeah, in a few hours, but, you but, don't you, have to but if they stood out there for three hours, yeah. then it would be five hours for them, you know, in this way. Yeah. It's more, more uh, it's certainly more yeah. uh, civilized. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, thank you for the visit. Oh, I appreciate your expertise oh, on I'm, all I'm this. delighted. We're and I hope you enjoy you Springfield while you're here. Well, yeah. we have. I, I've Good. seen many of the sites, and we're looking forward Terrific. to it. Terrific. Thanks, yeah. John. Okay. Thank you. Well, upstairs from the main hall, we were down there looking at some items that are going to be auctioned off. Upstairs, they have these uh, for, for members like yourself. If you want to rent a room for your merchandise and sell your merchandise. You can do that, can't you, Kathy? That's correct. Um, it's, really, it's really neat because you open up your hotel room, you put something Coca-Cola on the outside, mm -hmm. and you cover your bed, your dressers, <laughs> you bring machines in, <laughs> signs, you name it. People can fill a hotel room to look like a store. Yeah. It's and then amazing. what you do is you just tease them there because you got a whole room of stuff right. that you're renting, right? Exactly. So you exactly. tease them at the motel or the hotel room, and then you bring them in here for the big kill and all of the <laughs> stuff. What kind of a trailer do you have to have to bring this all this? We in? actually bring a utility trailer with a minivan, and we bring it all over the country, and um, yeah. we drive all this stuff wherever the show might be. And, and everybody knows the Combs family, right? They do. <laughs> <laughs> Show me they even know Sarah, my daughter, who's grown up with the collection. Yeah, yeah. So. She, does she like traveling with you all? She does. This? She enjoys okay. this because it's family and friends. Yeah. And yeah. you and you you uh, have fun with Coca Cola. Yeah. That's all it is. The, these, I actually show me some things that are rather unusual. Right, and these are neat because these were floral boxes from the 1930s. So Coca Cola, you would have them on the wall, and you could put your dried mm -hmm. flowers or, or real flowers, mm -hmm. whatever you want, and of course display Coca Cola. So mm -hmm. you don't find those too often. And are those are those wood? Um, they're actually like a bakelite or a na um, um, a masonite, like a fiberboard, fiberboard, oh, okay. something like that, molded fiberboard. Mm -hmm. And you know, from the 30s, it's amazing. It is to have that design. It, this is from the 40s, and, and mm -hmm. this is interesting because, because they were using metal for the war effort, right? Exactly. So they couldn't use the metal for the signs, mm -hmm. so they made uh, Coca-Cola, and most of the time they made wood signs. Mm -hmm. And um, this was a theme of different sports, so you have swimming and an example of tennis. And there were a lot can of different sports. Can I hold sports. this up, too? Yes, you can. Okay. And um, they're nice and colorful, and uh, they go together, and you could kind of display them together or apart, and either way, it's a nice Coca-Cola yeah, sign. Yeah, it really is. I guess you yes. would hang that. Um, or if you wanted to, you could even stick it in the stick it in the ground if you want to take it outside. Yes. Um, now these are interesting because this is this is tin. Yes. And and there are a lot of those. Right. But this ceramic one over here, this is kind of special. Yes, the porcelain. The porcelain will always. Oh, excuse me. Porcelain, that's okay. Yeah. Porcelain will always um, last a little bit longer because you don't get the uh, dings or the scratches and everything unless somebody. Um, 
uh, really took something hard and, yeah. and, and to it. But most of the time, the, the uh, tin signs, you might get the scratches and the little bit of rusting and things like that because yeah. you can see that it was okay, old. Okay, give us an idea of, of the difference in price then. You're asking what for this tin? We're asking it to nine fifty because it's a double-sided. So this oh, would is. have been put on a curb outside the door, mm -hmm. store, and uh, you could see both sides. That um, One side would be curb service, and then the other side might have been another sign. Uh-huh. 950. Yes. Wow. Yes. And what about the uh, the, the porcelain and that one is about eight or nine hundred dollars as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because of the shape. And, and it's one sided. It's one sided. Yeah. Yes. And okay. that could have been left outside and it would look just as good as it does today. It, it looks terrific. Thank of course, you. That's, it, it is porcelain. Yes. So. Okay. Now, there, there was, of course, marketing in baseball, you know, back in the day when baseball was king. Right. Coke was king and the yes. two went together pretty well. <laughs> yes, didn't they, they did. So you start out with an early piece like Ty Cobb, and um, everybody knew who that player was, sure. and Coca-Cola had to market them and uh, market baseball. And then you go up to something like this from the 50s, and you have a stadium dispenser with the Sprite Boy on it. Now, okay, Sprite Boy, we learned about him earlier. He was through the 40s and a little and bit into the 50s, 50s right? correct. And, 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 and the, 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 uh, the guy that, that's selling Coke in the stadium would put this on his back? He would, he would. He would put that heavy item on his back and he would squirt, use the little um, <laughs> uh, dispenser and squirt <laughs> the Coca-Cola into a cup oh, and uh, wow. hand you a Coca-Cola right in your seat. Okay, now this looks early. like a rare item to me. What it would is. that be worth? That would be about seven or $800. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's really precious. Yes. I mean, especially with Sprite Boy. And since they stopped making Sprite Boy, I mean, everything with Sprite Boy on it right. becomes more valuable, Exactly. Right? Yes, you were right. And let's see, what have we over here? Um, well, how, does it, how is this a Coke item? That's a Coke item that Eddie Fisher in the 50s had Coke time on TV. Oh, and he would actually put Coca-Cola in their bottles of Coke and ice. Mm -hmm. And that would spin. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how they would introduce Coca-Cola in his show. Yeah. Well, I, thank you. Uh, Kathy Combs, is that right? That's right. Kathy Combs and your family for, for, for letting us come in here. Um, the Combs are just one of the collectors here. There are 800 some collectors here at the National Coca-Cola Collectors Club in Springfield. Unfortunately, they won't be here next year. They're going to be in Phoenix, Arizona, but maybe sometime in the future they'll be back to Central Illinois. With another Illinois story in Springfield, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.